Welcome everyone to Gamer Milk. Today, the RX 6700 XT release date leaked, Intel's 11th gen boxes, they get beat by AMD already, and a huge story with updates on a new fight by Nvidia. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, AMD's upcoming RX 6700 XT could be coming very soon. I mean really soon. According to a recent tweet by the French site Cal Kotlin, the upcoming 6700 XT is set for release on March 18th. And that actually sounds like a release and not just the announcement, so we'll likely hear an announcement very soon if this is correct. As always, the question is whether you'll actually be able to buy one, though you may be able to with today's last story. And while you wait to finally pick up a new GPU, why not read about machine learning? Or better yet, listen with today's sponsor, Audible. Today's leading provider of audiobooks and other spoken word entertainment. And when I say the leading provider, I mean Audible has thousands of titles from tons of categories like technology, finance, engineering, and more. Plus, with an Audible membership, you get to download the titles so you can listen offline. To top it off, their new Audible Plus catalog offers tons of audiobooks to listen to, podcasts to follow, and much more. And it's all included with your subscription. The best part is that you can try Audible for free by visiting audible.com slash gamermeld or text gamermeld to 500-500 today. Next up, it looks like Intel's 11th gen CPU packaging have been leaked, at least the i9 variants. Starting things off, the i9 11900, 11900F, and 11900KF all come with the same design. They're fairly simple and ultimately look like Intel's new logo design language, not bad at all. Then there's the 11900K, and similar to the last couple generations, it's definitely different. I will say that I like the design overall, though it's giving me more of a bent vibe instead of the intentional angles similar to the 9900K. Still, it's not bad, though as always, the looks are completely subjective. What isn't so subjective is performance, and Intel's 11th gen got a new benchmark that was found and shared by Tom Apisak. As you can see, it comes from Geekbench, and it's of the i5-11600K. Now, what's interesting is that it was benchmarked with the leaked stock specs that we have for the 11600K, which means this should be around the performance of the final retail variant. Of course, it is just one benchmark, so keep that in mind. When it comes to performance, the 11600K got a single core score of 1565 and a multi core score of 6220. Now, the performance is at least somewhat affected by the slower 2133 MHz memory, but these scores are really bad. For example, AMD's Ryzen 5600X's average performance completely crushes both of those with the multi-core score being over 30% faster. Maybe there's something else going on here, but if this is correct, it's bad. Of course, if the pricing is better than AMD, Intel could have a winner on their hands. And lastly for today, we have a huge story from Nvidia, as well as some big updates that I'll get to in a few. The story begins with a recent blog post by the company, where Nvidia revealed a full new line of GPUs, specifically mining GPUs. Now hold on, that isn't the real story. In the same article, Nvidia announced that their upcoming RTX 3060, which they doubly confirm is launching on the 25th, will be getting its Ethereum mining performance cut in half. That's right, Nvidia is actually trying to stop miners from buying up all the cards for gaming. Remember that Ethereum is the main cryptocurrency that miners buy gaming GPUs for. In this article, Nvidia mentions that the drivers are designed to detect attributes of the Ethereum mining algorithm and reduce performance by around 50%. Now, the news doesn't stop there. A miner was already able to get some Zotac 3060s from a retailer that was selling them ahead of launch. That user tested them in a new video, and as you can see, the hash rate for the 3060 went from nearly 50 mega hashes per second to 26 in a matter of minutes. What's interesting about this is that the user obviously wasn't using the new driver for the card, which means at least some of this is in the BIOS of the GPU. To top it off, Nvidia confirmed that it uses both the BIOS and driver to pull this off, and that it apparently can't be hacked. Now, you may be thinking that Nvidia releasing these new mining GPUs will simply take away from the current gaming lineup's GPUs, and even if it did, it would at least help gamers get some cards. 
but according to them, the new mining cards, quote, could not meet the specifications of GeForce and don't impact overall GeForce capacity or availability, meaning these new CMP GPUs are effectively GPUs that weren't up to snuff to become a gaming GPU. Next, you may be wondering whether Nvidia will do this to other cards besides the 3060, and the answer is pretty interesting. According to Nvidia, they won't be going back to cards that have, quote, already sold. Well, in a tweet by copite 7 kimmy who's gotten a ton of things right on Nvidia in the past, he claims that Nvidia is potentially launching new GPU SKUs with the same mining degradation, meaning they would likely sell the same cards with the same specs, etc., but the new ones would have this same measure to try and prevent miners from buying them up. With that said, he does seem like he's more or less guessing at this, so I'm not sure, but at the same time, he says maybe quite a bit when he's absolutely right. Okay, so with all of that said, this is great news that there are a few issues. For one, with miners willing to spend upwards of double or more the price of MSRP, having the performance may not be enough of a deterrent, but it's a start. The other issue is that it's only targeting Ethereum, but Ethereum is certainly the most profitable cryptocurrency for miners today, at least with gaming GPUs, so focusing on Ethereum is a decent idea. And lastly, demand from gamers themselves is incredibly high and was likely the primary demand before Ethereum reached new heights. Still, this should at least help actual gamers get the cards, and I think it's a great first step to targeting multiple audiences without hurting Nvidia's core customers. Gamers. So while that does it for today, do you think this is a good step forward in fighting miners, or is it too little too late? Let me know down in the comments below, and definitely make sure to check out the GamerMail Discord server. And as always, have a great day!